Hello everybody, my name's Steve, I'm British Railroader. Welcome back to the Model Railway Room for a short video where I'm just going to review a new item that I got um, yesterday. It arrived after I'd made my layout update video, so I wasn't able to include it, but um, I thought that I would just do a quick one this morning just to show you what it is and what I think of it. So I, as you know, I'm a big fan of commuter trains. Now, I don't really have the opportunity to run them here on Brooklyn Park. It's not what that what the layout's for. And I have to imagine that there are commuter trains running elsewhere on the Long Island Railroad and also obviously on the New York subway, which runs quite close to the um, Bay Ridge branch of the uh, New York and Atlantic. But something came up on eBay and it was something I was really interested in. So this arrived yesterday, um, this box from MTH. Um, it is a two car New York subway works train set. This is the R17 subway cars that they produce. Now MTH is no longer in business itself. Um, it's HO models uh, moldings have been bought by scale trains, so may or may not reappear in the future, but there are quite a few of their models still out there. Now, this particular one was being sold by a family whose late father had bought it, but it never really been used. And it's DCC sound. Um, so I thought, absolutely, I've got to get this. And also being a works train, means that you would probably see it in places that you wouldn't normally. Now, don't get me wrong, you wouldn't see a New York Subway Works train on the Bay Ridge branch or any yards off of it, because let's face it, it's not the New York Subway, it's not even electrified. But it's just one of those things that I thought I'm going to have to get this, because maybe one day in the future, if I've got a bigger layout, I might have the opportunity to put a bit of the subway on there. Now, the R17 cars were built in the 50s and they were retired from revenue service in the 1980s. But some of these works cars um, that have been converted carried on until the early 2000s. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you might have seen one knocking around somewhere in the um, Long Island area. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go over to the layout. I'm going to talk you through some of the key features and then we'll show you what it's like running on the layout. So this comes as a two car set. The one on the right is powered, the one on the left is unpowered. And I think the first thing that we can probably notice is the amount of separately applied details, especially here at the cab end. So we have just here, we have pantograph gates, we have the safety chains, there are, there's an antenna, there are separately applied um, grab irons all over. Um, looking at the paintwork, the paintwork is very crisp. Um, I think they've done a great job with this yellow paint scheme um, and the chevrons. Uh, moving along, when you look at the um, unpowered car, one of the first things you notice is that the windows are clear. Um, the power car, um, the, the windows obviously have been silvered um, on the inside to try and give that impression of a reflection. I don't particularly like them. I almost feel it would have been better if MTH had left them clear and then just painted the inside block um, black um, or had some cover so that you um, at least had the impression that it was a darkened car rather than... Um, you know, this kind of silvered look. Um, there's a lot of details on these. Um, when you just tip them up, you can see um, there's quite a few bits and pieces on the underframe. The bogies are quite simple, but I think they're quite effective. Um, again, this is not necessarily kind of like athengenesis or rapido standard but it's pretty good i quite like it i think it looks really really nice moving around to the front again as you can see the destination blinds say not in service which would be correct for this kind of car because it wouldn't be um a revenue earning car at all um 
and then you know the the whole thing has got a good selection of lights and sounds which we'll demonstrate in a minute i think for me one of the things that i don't like about it is the rear car whilst it's got interior lights which again we'll see in a moment it doesn't have any headlights tail lights or lighted um, destination boards which i think is a bit of a retrograde step now I've looked at the dimensions of this that I can find online and it's pretty damn close. But what's interesting is when you put it up against one of the old lifelike cars, you can see here just how high the lifelike cars are. Um, they're also just a little bit wider as well. Now, part of the problem is it rides too high on its trucks, but um, I think that, you know, they got the dimensions just a little bit wrong on the lifelike cars. I think the only good thing about the lifelike cars as compared to the MTH cars is that they have interior lighting. The power car still has see-through windows, but also as well, they have directional headlights. Now, they don't have any other lighting features at the front, like destination blinds or, um, you know, the express or um, stopping lights which um, again I'll show you once the um, MTH car is lit up but I think for me one thing that, that could be improved on this and this is a shout out to Scale Trains if they ever do produce the R17 and other subway cars in the future from the old MTH moulds is that they put better electronics in the trailer cars and have them so that they can be switched on and off so if you've got them in the center of a train then you know they all of the head and tail lights can be switched off um but the um interior lights can stay on so i think that would be an improvement that could be made but let's switch this on and we will get it running okay so let's press f3 and as you can see the number boards come on uh, at the moment, it says that it's a local service. Um, that light can be switched off or it can be changed, which can be done like so. And we can turn it into an express train. Um, that's a little feature that I quite like. Um, headlights come on just down the bottom there. They're not hugely bright. Um, but actually you probably find a subway car of this age probably didn't have um, particularly bright headlights there's the horn and then the bell is obviously this weird electronic sound but that's obviously what they use on the New York subway now I haven't done anything to tune the decoder it's just as it came the only thing I've done is change the um, address on this um, but let's put this in. So I've got it at 128 speed steps and here we go at speed step one. So as you can see it does actually move nice and slowly and the acceleration is actually quite good. I mean we're on speed step six but I can speed her right up like this. So here we go and we can slow her down and it does have brake sounds. You can also hear some of the other background noises. Now there is a system on this that drives it through a sequence where when you're running you get these cab announcements and it stops the train and it calls into the signal yard for um, permission to move on and then when it's given permission it will move off again. Um, what it does mean you can't operate any of the other sounds whilst this sequence is going on and it took me a little while to figure it out but it, 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 it's it's a little bit of fun whether I'll use it or not I don't know the um, cab sounds are very loud and I haven't worked out how to turn them down yet but here we go let's just move her back obviously with it being an electric not a huge amount of noise this is just the traction motors and what it does have it has a um uh, what do you call it a stop sequence so if i press f3 again 
it shuts it down and as soon as the engines are off all of the lights go off as well so it's a lovely running unit i will be tweaking some of the cvs especially the acceleration and deceleration just a little bit um but uh yeah we go there's the subway train okay that's it for this video thank you very much for watching um so i suppose in summary i i do love this model um, I do need to tweak some of the CVs just to get the acceleration a little bit smoother. But um, apart from that, I don't think there's much else that I'm going to need to do with it. Um, just if, if anybody from Scale Trains is watching this, if you do, you know, reintroduce this, please think about putting more electronics in the trailer cars so that you get better lighting features. And also with that power card, those those silvered out windows just they stick out like a sore thumb. I think, you know, had they been blackened or darkened or, you know, something or the left clear and then the insides, the mechanism was all blacked off. I think that would have been a, a much better option. Um, but, you know, apart from that, it's a really, really good looking train. And especially when you compare it to the other offering from Lifelike Proto 1000 Walther's they're all, all, all intertwined now. It just shows you what can be done, you know, with the with, with a, a good subway car. I mean, when I did all the measurements, the measurements were near enough spot on for the um, type of car that it is. But there you go. Anyway, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And when you see the little notification bell, click all, and then you will get notified of all my new videos. But this is Steve, the British Railroader, saying goodbye for now from my model railway room. Bye-bye.